Yes, he is. I, I think he's also Melbourneian. Yes, he has a very dark and perceptive sense of humour. And uh, I think I mentioned this particular cartoon last, last week. It's called TV Sunrise. And you can see that there's, uh, there's good old dad sitting on the floor in front of the TV with his son going, look at this magnificent sunrise, son. And off to their left in the window is the real thing. <laughs> That's a strange situation. Yeah, and remember, remember the story that went with that, the, the ideas that went with that, the difference between first-hand experience, what you can experience first-hand, and then facts that are second-hand. Like, yes, I saw that that, mm, I saw someone come out of that door, and I know that they're in that room, but you're just assuming that they're in that room. And then these kinds of facts that come from TV or books, things that you never experience, you've never experienced in your life at all, and they're appearing there as information. And um, hopefully, you can trust the information. But it has happened in the history of the world. I won't name which countries, but in certain countries, um, the information is highly controlled, shaped. Uh, sometimes it's called propaganda, and that's the information you're given, and that's what you believe, because it's coming from authorities that you think are telling you the truth, and so that's, that's the world that you come to know. Rather than opening the curtain and having a look, but usually if you try to open the curtain in those kinds of countries, uh, you usually get killed for that. So you, you don't open the curtain. So it can be, you know, kind of fun, but it has really, really important consequences N to actually know your sources well. And I don't mean your eating sources. I mean the source of, of your information. Know that it's trustworthy. And that's why when later on this week um, we start to offer you the kinds of uh, materials that would be useful for you to have a look at over the years in terms of ATM lessons. That's why primary source, you know, straight, straight from Feldenkrais is probably the best way to start because you're getting no one else's story. You're getting it straight from how he taught it. Bang. Not getting my version, Jenny's version, Susan's version. You're getting his version. And then you can go, all right. I can see how he puts this together, and then you can take it on from there. So that's really important that you experience the lessons as first-hand as possible. The next one is this one. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think I've had days that I feel like that. Matter of fact, I think most days I feel like that. It's like the mind just goes, <laughs> and the body's going, wait for me, I'm catching up. And um, that can happen a lot for people when they first lie down on the floor in an awareness and movement lesson because what's happened? They've just come from the outside world. They've landed on the floor and they're like, and they have to actually let the mind kind of settle down for all these slow processes of the body to be able to speak because the head's running in the other direction. So it's really interesting that that's what needs to happen. Yeah. Yep, yep, as soon as I finish the uh, cartoons, you're most welcome. Yep, thanks. All right, what's another one? Oh, I like this one. This is another way of using your mind, right? It says, let it go, let it out. Let it all unravel. Let it free and let it can uh, and it can be a path on which to travel. It's nice, isn't it? It's nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a different way of using your mind where it can be a very reflective process. And through the process of reflection, contemplation, uh, bringing your body along for the ride. Notice his head's not racing ahead. It's a different way of living. 
It's a different way of doing ATM too. So yes, <laughs> do let it go. And you, you'll hear us say that, you know, do less, do less, less effort. Don't try so hard. Let it go. Good way to go. All right. You want to make that announcement now? All right. Light green cardigan. Light green, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So do you remember uh, who you were working with before lunch? Yeah, good. Don't pair up with them again. <laughs> pair up with somebody different. <laughs> You said hello to that person. But come around the skeleton for a moment and um, just have a look at what's going on in that folding arm movement. And um, you will work in pairs in a moment, just helping your partner. Yeah, here we go. So when the arms are folded across the chest like that, yeah, that, that's probably clearer like that, yeah. You can see that this arm is tending to want to go over here, and this arm is tending to want to go over there. Let's just put this arm aside for a second and look. If that arm is resting on the chest and you start to move it in this direction, there is once again that flow of motion that goes into the elbow, into the shoulder, into the collarbone, and then look where it goes, look. Can you see? What's head, neck, chest. Why? <laughs> if we slow down a little bit and come closer and have a real good look, you'll see why. I mentioned in that lesson that this is the only articulation, this is the only bony articulation between the arm and the rest of the body. There are no other bony articulations. And this joint between the arm, the shoulder blade, and the, co and the sternum is what's causing all that rolling movement to happen. So watch what happens right there if I put my finger there. So we're here, you start to take the arm out. And already, if your finger was where my finger is, what you'd feel is that bone is now pressing into my finger. It's pushing in. And there's a certain point when we get to about there, it really is pushing in. So if you get a chance sometime today or tomorrow to actually feel that, arrange the arm like that, have that finger there, and you'll feel how strongly that strut, that strut of a bone pushes into the chest. That's what starts the ball rolling. And um, if you're not stiff, then one muscle group will pop in and the next muscle group will pop in until the pelvis is rolled and you move your legs and everything rolls. That makes sense? The intent is, um, well, the intent is to literally take those fingers over in this direction. Ooh, you're going to break your chest, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rather than, because most people can just take, oh, yeah, I can touch the floor. What's the problem? But if you touch the floor there, it doesn't roll you. There is this intent of touching the floor further and further afield over here. And, you know, if you delay, if you delay in time when you put your fingers on the floor, then the arc of motion is completely different. Look. Da, da, da. So, yeah. so this, how to, how to say it in words, 
in a way that is as clear as it is visually here is tricky. Would you agree? So words, words are your friend and words are also sometimes not so useful. Sometimes, sometimes a, simple, a simple showing on a skeleton could help your class to get something that they're struggling with. And my contention would be, uh, why not? Yeah? Yeah, why not stop the class? Why not have someone, oh, look, this is what's happening. Have you considered that? And then, you know, that arises in someone's mind, and it's not instruction, but they can see, oh, there is some sort of certain set of relationships that are important. And that's, that's what they then understand. And then the words have meaning. Until that moment, they're just blah, 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 blah. You know that um, there's another cartoon by Gary Larson. Uh, what do dogs hear when their owners speak? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's it. And then there's, there's the other one. How do dogs speak to each other? Hey, hey, hey. Have you seen that one? <laughs> That's a good one too. <laughs> hey, everything's hey. <laughs> so not hey, H-A-Y, H-E-Y. <laughs> good. Just to make sure we're on the right road. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That'd be good. Yeah, that'd be about how horses talk. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so last week... This is a last week we began with the pelvis and pelvic clock. And through that motion of the motion, through that motion of the pelvis, we made our way biomechanically up that way. And then we did arm circles. And through the motion of the arms, we made our way biomechanically into the into the chest into the spine and then back to the pelvis again because some of you found that if you started to actually turn and flex the arm movement got faster and faster and then where did we go we went to picking up the foot hooking the toe and doing all of these crazy movements you know around and around and every time you did that flip move movement of course you get motion of the pelvis again so can you see that in these kinds of lessons that we're doing we really are interested in the motion being composed and flowing through all over. It's not, we're not really looking at isolated movements. And uh, this is the last thing I'll say before I get you to pair up. But unfortunately, language is such that it's linear. You can only describe in a sentence one thing after another. And so you can't get the pattern that goes across time. You just can't get it. You need something else. And that's why we use demonstration. Uh, if, we all, if we all knew uh, movement notation, I'd notate it for you. I'd say, okay, here's your ATM. Go off and read it. And you'd go off and read it, and you'd have the ATM. Because in movement notation, you don't put down what every joint in the body does. You just put down what the primary movements are, and you feel in the rest. Yeah. So maybe sometime in this training program, we'll do a little bit of movement notation, because I know in Amherst, uh, the group that Feldenkrais took through, he invited the guy over from Israel for three days to teach them a little bit of movement notation, so that you could see that there's a different way of conceptualizing movement, other than words, and other than images like this yeah and it really does change your perspective on how things work so we'll, we'll, i'll see if we can get that organized all right so could you please pair up with a partner one person sit up there i won't i won't talk you through it but one person sit up here 